Hi guys, so we've got the Star Adventure here and what I'd like to talk about today is the go-to system that was first introduced by Camille Pekeller uh, some time ago. On that system he used the uh, right ascension or sorry the hour angle actually on the right ascension and a declination angle to adjust the position of the Star Adventure such that you could pinpoint stars, galaxies etc much more quickly than using a star hopping system. Um, I specifically found this more helpful because I'm in a bottle five area um, and you tend to star hop and then you're staring into a black area in between two points of stars trying to find galaxies etc and it's I just don't find it that easier. So this system was a game changer. Um, I don't actually do much deep sky anymore. Uh, I did it when I first started. Now I tend to do a bit more Milky Way. However, I have got a system that speeds up a little bit and maybe improves what Camille Pekela came up with. So if you have a look at the system that he came up with, he came up with an idea of putting on this part here, which is the deck, uh, sorry, this bit here really, the declination part, which is adjusted on here. And you can see on here, that I have put on a piece of paper with angles going through from minus 20 through to 90 and back again. Now this is on Camille's video. I'm not going to try and improve on that because actually it's it's spot on, bang on. Uh, it's quite easy to do. So I would direct you to Camille's videos. Uh, I will put a link in the bottom on the information for you to do that. However, where I can make an improvement is on the part on here. So on Camille's version, where he's using the hour angle to get the right ascension position, he did a video of this actually turning through 24 hours so that he could see where it me meant to be for each different time frame. And I don't really know the ins and outs because I haven't looked at it for a while. Um, however, I just thought, well, I'm sure there's an easier way of doing that because we've got numbers 1 to 12 on here. And numbers 1 to 12 are the same as a clock. So we think, well, can I change the hour angle that is given in 24-hour clock into a 12-hour clock system? And yes, I can. Dividing by 2 very quickly does that. So let's just have a look at that idea. So on here, I've put a 12 hour clock, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and back to 12. And also I've written the numbers 1 to 24 around the outside as well. Now, as I've said, the hour angle is usually up to 24. To convert it to a 12 hour situation that we've got on the Star Adventurer is very straightforward. So let's just for argument's sake that I've got uh, an hour angle of seven hours exactly. I mean, let's be honest about it. It's not going to happen that simply, but seven hours as an hour angle. If we follow this round on the 24 hour clock, we can see that it comes in here and that is three and a half. It's halfway between the three and four. And that's very simple to convert. You don't need to do a clock like this. You literally go, what's half of seven? And if you're not that good on your maths, pop it on a calculator on your phone. 7 divided by 2, 3.5. So it's three and a half hours. If I look at uh, 22 hours, half of 22 is 11. And you can see they match up quite quickly. So we can very easily change the 24 hour time that we get on something like uh, Stellarium. Is that what you call it? I don't know if I can never pronounce that. Um, into a number that we can put on to the Star Adventurer. So this is Stellarium. It's a nice bit of software. I think you can use it on computer, but I usually just use it on my phone. I've tried other software that's out there, but this is the one I always come back to because it seems the most user-friendly and useful. So we're going to look up Andromeda and find its hour angle. So if I pop search in there and I pop the letter in, it comes up with Andromeda. So I can click that. And then it gives me a little rectangular box at the bottom. If I hit the little 
bar above the word Andromeda, I get some more information. And you can see here that it's given us some constellation magnitude size RA slash deck. If I hit the arrow to the side of Andromeda, I get some more information, including the hour angle at 15 hours and 39 minutes. Further to that, it also gives me the right ascension and it gives me the declination. So the declination is one we're interested in and the hour angle. So the declination is 41 degrees and 16 minutes. Um, that's the part that I'm going to again refer you back to Camille and use his method for that. The hour angle is a bit I'm going to make a modification to. So the 15 hours and 40 minutes is a nice number to work with just for demonstration purposes. So we're going to now go to the Star Adventurer. So we're now going to try and set the Star Adventurer uh, right ascension for 15 hours and 40 minutes. So as was pointed out, we half that value. So half of 15, 7 hours and 30 minutes again. Half of 20 minutes is 10, so that's a total of 7 hours and 40 minutes. So before we can start that, we must zero our arm. And the way we do that is we take a clock, take a clock, take a phone, sorry, and we pop it on there with a bubble level so that we can guarantee that this is exactly horizontal and it will be given zero degrees. Once we have that, we then go to the dial here. So I'm just going to zoom in on the dial. And what we can see here is that we have a number zero on this disc now this disc moves so if we line up the zero on here with the zero on the top then we know that we've got that all set so that is saying zero and so is the disc at the front if we then move this it just follows the disc follows it and so it will allow us to very easily get that back to horizontal or what we're going to call zero degrees so how do we go up from there? Well, we know we've got seven hours and 40 minutes and we can use now, as long as we don't touch the disc, so we adjust it at all, we can use these numbers here to count along to seven hours and 40 minutes. So we're starting from zero. So that means these are all no hours and so many minutes. That one is now telling us the next big line is the start of the ones. So once we're across there, we are now on the ones. And we're going along in the ones and then we go along there and the next one, this line now is the start of the two. So these are two hours and so many minutes. Even though there's a three in there, that three is just telling us that the next big line will be the three hour and so many minutes. So now we're in three hours, so many minutes, etc. etc. So we can keep going and say, right, we're now going to six, and that's six, and now we're in this the next big number will be seven. So now we're in the sevens. And we've got all these little divisions going along here between the seven line and the eight line. Each of those little marks is worth four minutes. So if we're going to do seven hours and 40 minutes, that means we've got to do 10 of these little digits. So that means we're going to do five and then we're going to do 10. And what we would normally do at that point once we've lined that up is nip that off on here. Oh, just got too far the other way, so I'll just really line that up again. So seven hours, 40 minutes, and then we would tighten that up. So now we know that that's set. So if we start the Star Adventure, it will start tracking, and it should be lined up as far as we're concerned on the right ascension to point at that star. What we then would need to do is to adjust our uh, declination according to the number, I believe it was 41 degrees, so we would adjust that to 41 degrees and that should point in the right direction. There's a little caveat with that because obviously you've got, you can start from zero one side. I'll just adjust that. Yeah, you can start from zero one side and you can start zero the other side. You might get the wrong one. If you've star hopped and you know roughly where your galaxy is, say Andromeda, then you will know if your camera's pointing in the wrong direction. It'll be fairly obvious. You just go, oh, dummy. I need to go from the other side. I can say that from experience because I've done it. Okay. Now, the other thing that we've got a problem with is I'm sure you can see, uh, if I pull this out, 
that the camera is going to be attached here and it's going to be upside down which means that you're going to be doing all sorts of weird olympic game neck cricking scenarios trying to look at your screen and make sure that you've actually got your object in view so what we need to do is find a better way of doing it what we want really is a system where we can get the camera up here where it's easy to see so we want it up here in this area here not right down here where it's no good and that is effectively a meridian flip now it's very easy to do a meridian flip using the angle hour because we know that on a 24 o'clock we go around 24 and by 10 we get to the from the zero point down to the bottom where on a normal clock you get number six you actually get number 12. i'll demonstrate it on a piece of paper in a second just to give you a visual representation however what we can do is say right well that means if i take 12 off my hour angle and then half what's left i will get the number that will allow me an easier access to my camera so 15 hours and 20 minutes so we say 12 off the 15 gives us three hours we've now got three hours and 20 minutes half of three hours is one and a half hours half of 20 is 10 so we're now looking at an hour angle of one hour and 40 minutes so if we zoom in again i'll just press that button there we go we can now say right okay well, we're going to unlock this because that's no good to us we're going to take this back round until our zeros match again so hopefully you can see that we're zeros matching with it right we've got that lined up so we're now going to do one hour and 40 minutes so these are zeros the next big division is going to be one so we're now on the one and we've now got to do 10 lots of four minute divisions to get to one hour and 40 so that's five and that's ten and then we can nip that off there let's get that right just a bit up. there we go and you can see hopefully that once I pull out again, then that gives us an angle which we were at this point and now at this point. Now, I'll demonstrate again on the piece of paper in a second, but what you will find is that the camera is pointing the wrong direction from the declination because if our camera was pointing here and then we rotate it this way, it will now be pointing that way and it needs to be pointing that way. So, what we then have to do is do the declination from the opposite side that we were doing it originally. Again, if you've been star hopping first and you know roughly where you're looking, it's usually so obvious that you go, oh, yeah, right, just quickly turn it and adjust your camera to point the right direction. So I'll just demonstrate that on paper now so you can see what I'm getting at if that did not make sense in the first go. So we started with. 15 hours and 40 minutes to get on the 12 hour clock we half that which made it 7 hours and 40 minutes which we can see is here so this is where our camera was and as was pointed out that's going to be quite difficult to use because it's upside down so if we take 12 hours off that 15 hours 12 hours in 24 hour clock works out as 180 degrees or you can think of it as 12 hours and then half to six hours on the 12 hour clock. Again, that's 180 degrees half way around the clock. So this distance here is 180 degrees. And this represents our 12 or six hours, depending on which numbers you're dealing with. That brings us up to here. Now, if we do that from the numbers, what we do is say, right, 15 hours and 40 minutes, take away 12 is three hours and 40 minutes. Half of three hour 40 minutes is one hour and 40 minutes, which you can see is there. So if we were to turn our camera around and bring it right around here, I'm sure you would see quite obviously it'll be pointing that direction. And we know our drometer wants to be pointing in that direction to match this. So that means what we have to do is turn on the dial and the declination to turn it the other way so if you remember what we had on the declination was 0 to 90 and 90 back to zero so we just turn it using the other the second half of the dial 0 to 90 and you will then quite easily have your camera facing in this direction
direction. So hopefully that explains the basic idea of a meridian flip. It's very straightforward, I believe. Initially, just half your time to get your hour angle in 12 hour. And if that is in the wrong place, then start again, take 12 away first, then half what's remaining and just rotate the camera to face the right direction. Again, it's usually self-evident if you have an idea of where you're looking. And if you're using something like Stellarium to find your hour angle, then you know where you're looking. So you know you're pointing in the wrong direction. So hopefully that uh, is helped and explained how to use that in maybe a quicker way than Camille's version on where he's filmed it and also the other guys, I think it was Bob Astro did one where it was a, a chart he'd used. Um, I'll put the Camille Capella in the bits at the bottom on YouTube so that you can link to that and look at his initial videos. Um, hopefully this will just speed that up for you a little bit. Okay, thanks for watching. If you liked it, feel free to give me a like. Um, next videos, maybe we're looking at me doing some disaster and getting things wrong in the field, but we'll see.